My name is Waleto Gebre. I have lived in Harar for the last 10 years. Ever since I was a little girl, my dream was to become a famous movie actress. I never miss any film being premiered in the city. I look at the actresses on the billboards and think that it could be me. But what I really do is sell chat in the Makonen Square in Harar. I go to the market every morning and I sell about 10 kilos of chat daily. I usually finish selling my merchandise before noon and then I head home. Once a month I travel by train to Djibouti to sell large quantities there. Waleto lives with her husband and several nieces and nephews. She doesn't have any children of her own. Her husband is a police officer and earns about $100 a month. Waleto brings home twice as much money as her husband by selling chat here and in Djibouti. One could say that they are a middle-class Haradi family. Ethiopia is a Christian island surrounded by a sea of Muslim countries. Harar is an island within this island, a Muslim city buried deep in the heart of Ethiopian Christianity. But first and foremost, Harar is a difficult city to classify. It is the fourth holy city of Islam and houses almost 100 mosques within its walls, the largest concentration per square kilometer in the world. Alongside the numerous mosques, however, there is also an abundance of bars. And at the bars, as well as on the street, during the day and at night, the women are those who control what goes on in the city. They control the production and sale of chat, a plant that is a stimulant that marks the rhythm of life in Harar. According to local journalists, the first women's association in Ethiopia was established in Harar. Today, there are more than 50 professional women's associations in Harar, which have created a mutual help network around which economic, political, and social activities revolve. For centuries, Harar was the key point for trade between Ethiopia and the Somali coast. To safeguard its sanctity and commercial supremacy, Harar was closed to the unfaithful until 1854, when Richard Burton succeeded in entering the walled city of Harar, where he remained for 10 years as a guest of the Sultan. There existed a curse which said that the power of the city would begin to decline upon the arrival of the first Westerner. Coincidence or not, from that moment on, a slow decline began, a decline which has kept the city dozing, 
drugged by the effects of Chad. At the same time, Harar is a devoted, ancient and sensuous city. This is the ambiance that Arthur Rimbaud searched for. The French poet took refuge here in Harar when he decided to abandon literature to become a trader and explorer. It was the perfect place to immerse himself completely in the myths of the East. Rimbaud was a genius who said everything he had to say before the age of 20. Then he abandoned poetry and the literary life of Paris to embark upon an African adventure. He was disillusioned with the world and with himself, with the vulgarity that surrounded him in Europe at that time. His rejection became an escape, a contradiction. He was a rebel who wanted to battle despair with the search for the extreme. In November of 1880, Rimbaud left Aden and crossed the Red Sea to Zeila, traveled the road through the Somali desert for 20 days, and entered Harar in order to take over the trade office of Aden. He arrived with the hope of striking it rich in a very short time. He lived in this house that is today a bar located in the heart of the city. I have come to know the skies splitting with lightning and the water spouts and the breakers and current. I know the evening and dawn rising up like a flock of doves. And sometimes I have seen what men have imagined they saw. I have seen the low hanging sun speckled with mystic horrors, lighting up long violet coagulations like the performers in very antique dramas waves rolling back into the distances, their shiverings of Venetian blinds. I have dreamed of the green night, of the dazzled snows, the kiss rising slowly to the eyes of the seas, the circulation of undreamed of saps, and the yellow-blue awakenings of singing phosphorus. Chat is a cultural stimulant. It's very unusual for someone to take it alone, since it is essentially a social drug. 